afternoon. Uh, my name is Jason Weisberg. I am the Executive Vice President of Sales here with ValueLine, and I want to thank you for taking the time today to tune into our webinar series. Um, today's webinar is uh, targeted for our library prospective customers and current customers. We are going to talk about how to navigate the digital platform. Uh, we're going to point out some of the most popularly used features, make sure our current customers are getting the most out of their subscription, and show some of our prospective customers some of the highlights of using the line online. So just a couple of housekeeping items before we begin. Uh, the webinar is going to run rough, roughly about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, we purpose try to keep these short. Um, at the end of the webinar, uh, I will take some questions, which you could submit via the Q&A feature on the WebEx platform or through the chat box as well. I'll also show you at the end how to contact us uh, via email or phone. Uh, if we don't get a chance to get to your questions, uh, I apologize in advance, but uh, feel, uh, rest assured that we will answer all your questions if you submit those to us uh, via email or, again, by calling our institutional hotline number. Uh, so let's uh, get started. I just want to take a moment and just briefly uh, discuss ValueLine uh, in general uh, as a company, as a platform. Again, many of the attendees on today's webinar are new to us. Um, perhaps you're getting us in a print format, but you might be new to the online platform. Uh, so ValueLine is currently celebrating its 85th year in business. Um, we are located in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, we employ about 60 analysts who write and create all, all this great research for your faculty, your um, your staff, uh, your students, for everybody to realize. Um, so we've been around a long time. Uh, we specifically cover the asset classes such as equities, options, convertibles, mutual funds, and ETFs. So just about every major investment class that your uh, patrons uh, would invest in or want to know about, we do provide research on them. We do have many different platforms. If you look on your screen right now, I'm going to go to the library services category here on our website, and it will introduce all the different platforms that we offer. And if you see here in the middle of your screen, uh, these are the different types of products and services that we can offer our customers. We do still have the classic print, uh, but nowadays more and more of our subscribers truly um, depend on the online version uh, to help out their patrons um, the most out of the subscription. So ValueLinePro.com will get you over to where we are right now. Look at library services, and you can see we have a whole bunch of different packages. Um, we do price them based on size, uh, whether you're an academic institution, uh, your full-time enrollment we take into account, if you're a municipal library, your population served, um, and we try to work within each library's budget to make sure that we can get you on Value Line and make sure um, everybody uh, has the opportunity to view our research. Now, so let's talk about, in general, um, a little bit about our product as well. Um, our reports issued every week. Uh, we sent out about 120 companies are updated every Monday along with a what's called a selection and an opinion report and a um, summary and index report. If you're a print customer, then you know you get that uh, approximately every Monday or Tuesday in the mail. If you're an online customer, then you will get that uh, 8 a.m. It's released every Monday, uh, so it'll be ready for you and waiting online as soon as your patrons get in. Um, our companies, though, although we release about 120 each week, each company is on a 13-week cycle. This is important to note because if we issue, say, a report on Apple today, the report will not come out for about 13 weeks or four 13 weeks, not out, 13 weeks from now. Now, it's important to note that in the meantime, in between those 13 weeks, if there are any major developments, um, a merger, an acquisition, a major announcement 
on behalf of the company. We will post what's called a supplementary report as well as it is possible that the ranks or the ratings can change for that company within those 13 weeks. Now, if you're an online subscriber, anytime those ranks change, you will immediately see that reflected online. Uh, if you're a print subscriber, um, it might take you longer to be able to view that in the print version to see those changes, which is just one of the many benefits of going online. We cover a uh, hundred different industries. Uh, you also get reports on uh, our other products, such as mutual funds, about 20,000 funds. Every ETF that's out there, we cover Japan and the United States, um, as well as, I, like I noted, all, all options, about 200,000 options contracts and convertible securities. So that's just a brief overview of what we cover, what we do, and how things work. Um, I guess our last note before we done is our ranking system, which I'll talk about a little more when I show you. But our ranking system is a one through five category. Keep in mind a one and a two are very good rankings. Um, those indicate it's a situation that an investor may want to purchase the security. A four and a five in a uh, not so good of a situation. Perhaps if you own it, you want to think about selling it. And then finally, a three is right in the middle. It's kind of neutral. We're neither recommending buy or sell at that time. Kind of keep an eye and watch. A little bit of background, a real high level view of the company uh, and our services. Let's, if you look at your screen now, we're going to jump over to the product. Uh, what you see in front of you is the dashboard. Um, now, keep in mind, uh, each library will be a little different, not each one, but you have different options, per se. You can open up your product to the dashboard, or you can open your product up to the browse research screen, either one depending on uh, what link you want to choose. Now, our academic libraries uh, do get access to what's called the professional version of our product, which has a couple of different tools, while the municipal libraries have the traditional library subscription. Um, the biggest differences happen to be uh, exporting data, for example. You know, we're very protective about our data in a municipal environment that'll be a little more restrictive than it would in an academic environment, per se. So uh, when you click on, your patrons click on the link, they can open up to this browse research or the dashboard. Um, it's important that the dashboard is really one of the places you want to go. If I move this quick links box up, you're going to notice here this quick links box is important because it will show you everything you have access to. How is it going to do that? It's going to do it in a color-coded format. So, for example, everything that you have highlighted in blue, that is active. You access to that part of the subscription, but anything you see, say, in gray, you will not have access to that. Uh, and if you go and try to click on something in gray, a message will just pop up saying the product is not part of your subscription. Uh, so we'll give your uh, patrons a heads up that, you know, don't bother really going into that section because you do not have access. So again, blue you do, gray you do not. The quick links box on this dashboard plate is a, is a great place to go. Um, every Monday uh, here, as I talked about, the VLS current issue in line at 8 a.m., we have the summary and index. We have the selection and opinion that gets updated. If you're currently a print customer, you want to think about going online because it has a lot of advantages, such as the fact that you no longer have to keep your print shelves. Um, you have access to archived issues on here. Uh, we have an extra subscription uh, historical archives going back to 1997. Uh, you can purchase as well as the rolling 13-week historicals that come with it. Uh, so the, it has, that's one major advantage already, switching from print to online, is the fact that you won't have to take up space saving the print copies, as well as all the tools we'll look at. So on the dashboard, the first thing a lot of people do on Mondays is they come in, they click on this VLS current issue, and you'll see a list of companies that release this week. Uh, again, same thing that if you're a print customer, you get in mail, um, but these are all the electronic formats of the companies that came out this week, about 120 different companies. Anytime you see a screen like this, one of the great navigational features is up here on top of the, um, or the headings. You click on any of these to sort that perspective column. In this case, blue.
blue will indicate which column you're sorting on at the moment. So we are looking at alphabetical A to Z by company name. If I over, say, and click on timeliness, which is our bread and butter ranking, probably the most um, you know uh, important ranking that our subscribers look at, click on that and see the ones through five. So if I click on it again, it'll go five through one. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is a um, good feature to see. Any list you see like this, the column headings will be um, sortable. As out, some libraries will have the access to download some of this data, some will not, depending on the type of library you are. Um, and then customization, too, is limited in some uh, formats versus others. Um, but if you have the customization, uh, patrons can move some things around, such as maybe hide the previous timeliness and add the last closed price. And then you'll see here, um, it'll reflect the change just for the active session they're in. In. And that's important. Since these are public databases, you are libraries, anybody can use them. Uh, you do not have the ability to customize and save. But while a user is in their active session, they can customize it all they'd like. Uh, but once they leave that active session, it will revert back to its original state. Focus on again the screen for a moment. You see there's a lot of data on here, sortable columns information. If somebody was interested in reading a report on one of these companies, such as American Airlines, I would simply click on the name of the company and it will load up the digital version of the research, which we're looking at right now. Now, I'm going to take a moment to quickly give you the overview of it uh, because it would take much longer to go through every part. Um, and on that note, I, I do want to add that we do offer one-on-one -on -one specific webinars to our library customers. So if you're a current customer and you need some training, or if you're a prospective customer and you're interested in really taking a deep dive and looking at our product, you know, please contact us and we will arrange a um, special one-on-one -on -one webinar with you and your staff uh, and conduct a uh, in-depth training of it. Um, so looking at the digital version, as I scroll through it, you'll see there's a lot of different what we call modules. Um, squares, rectangles, what have you. Each one of these is a module. For example, this one is a commentary module about what the analyst thinks of the company. It is um, a lot of good information regarding this specific company and how Value Line feels about it. Uh, as I scroll down, you'll see there's a lot of good modules in here that, that people like to look at. Uh, if you see a module, each module has a um, title bar, let's call it. You have options to either expand or bring the module to the forefront to really highlight that specific module and take a deep dive into it. Uh, while we're on this part, one thing to also notice, and this is the same in the print report as it is in online, you'll notice that we have some figures in bold, figures that are in regular font. The bold are value lines, estimates, and projections. Basically, what people are paying us for is to tell, ask us what we think about the company is going to do either one, two, or three to five years out in the future based on these specific categories. And the numbers here are actual numbers reported. So these estimates and projections in bold, value lines, proprietary numbers versus what actually came out. Out. I will show each one of those, um, and that's a big, big advantage for your subscribers is to see what we think is going to happen to the company in the future. Um, if I scroll back up to the top, uh, you'll see here, and this is important to note out because a lot of patrons ask for this, right here is the traditional PDF version of the reports. What does it mean? It means it's the exact page you see in our printed format. So if I come here and I click on PDF reports, the most recent one is going to be on top, and then you see some historical dates going back. Depending on the entitlements and what you subscribe to, um, you'll have access to more or less of these um, reports. If I click the most recent one on top, you'll notice here it loads the PDF version. Now, important because this is the one that your uh, patrons should print out if they want to take with them. This is the one pager. If I scroll down, you'll see it looks exactly like the ones in print. Um, and it's you 
all the same exact things that are in the online. The online brings you more, but it'll have the online has exactly what's in print plus where here's the PDF that has exactly what you get in the printed version. And again, this is what people would take with them, print out. It has the important information our time and safety and technical. Again, you notice here's the bold, just like in the digital version I showed you. This is bold font, which means it's our estimates and projections versus the regular font, or, which is the reporting. Anything that's not available, that means that we were either covered at the time or data changed um, for the specific categories. So remember that, because that's a big question you're going to get from your patrons is how do I get the printed version? And after you load it, right here, the PDF reports. So the other great way to navigate around this, what we did is we went, just to remind you, we were at the dashboard and then clicked on VLIS current issue. But a lot of times patrons like to come in, they already know the name or ticker of the company. The best way to quickly get to any report is on the top right-hand side of this screen right here where it says company name or symbol. What you want to do is you want to come in here and type in either the name or the ticker. In this case, AAPL is a ticker for Apple. Wait for the drop-down menu, find your company, and click on it. Then load the digital version of the report. It's all for American Airlines. Now you're looking at for Apple. And you can scroll through it and see all the different modules. Or keep it in mind that you can come right to the PDF version right here and print out the most recent um, version of the research report to take with you. So the white box is always here on every screen. You can quickly jump from one company to another uh, just by simply going up there and typing in information. The left-hand side here where it says current list, it keeps a list of the companies that you've been looking at while you're in your active session. Also, over, it pops up what we call a baseball card to give you a little overview of that company. If I go to the Browse Research uh, part, right up here on the top of your screen, Browse Research, if I go to that section, this is a good thing to point out, this is where we'll also keep track of the companies we're looking at. Right here, up there on the top left, recently searched. The companies that are recently searched during my active session. Keep in mind, as soon as a patron is done, they leave this active session, this all clears out. If we we'll spin on this page, if I scroll down, what you'll also have access to is stuff like this, value line featured lists and our coverage universe. Okay. Coverage universe will tell you what you have. Analyst covered is the investment survey. So mid cap is the small and mid cap. Uh, together, our, our, our biggest um, one is the pro elite for academics, and we have library elite for the municipal libraries. So this will tell you what universe you have. So if a patron easily wanted to see all the companies in your subscription, they can come and click on analyst covered for the investment survey universe. They can change the display to 500 at a time. And in the investment survey, we have about 1,700 companies. Uh, so there's roughly three and a half pages or so at 500 a page. And you can see every company that's uh, available in your subscription. Um, so another nice navigational tip is if you come to the find idea section. Uh, this is kind of helpful also because there's a lot of good things under here. If I click on find ideas, this is where you're going to go to find probably the most important thing on here is the screener. The patrons to go through our universe, find just the companies they're looking for. So I go to um, screener. I come to uh, a blank screen, left-hand side here, you'll see are a bunch of different fields that agents can use the screen on. And if you scroll down, there's a few hundred of them. So if I scroll down here, you'll see the list builds and builds and builds up to some categories that you need to expand. So these are examples of categories that haven't been expanded yet. This is an example of a category that was expanded. And any category, just click on the arrow right here, and it drops down all the fields that are in that specific category. To start opening a screen, it's very simple. You would just click on the fields you want. For example, industry. 
I'll say stock price is one of the most popular. If I scroll down further, let's pick a value line specific one, in this case, Timeline Frank. As for three pieces, if I scroll back up, three pieces of criteria, industry, stock price, and timeliness rank. Keep in mind, the screener is a cumulative match. So that means each level will turn another list of stocks until eventually we get to final level, which is in here, number three, right? So you have one, two levels. At first to here, I'm going to say I want to see all the companies that are in the bank industry. It's going to start out with 349 companies. This is going to be 349 because this is maxed out. So we're in all the companies within this range. And then finally there's zero here because we haven't chosen any criteria from timeliness rank right here. Our next category, I'm going to shrink the price down a little bit just by sliding this bar to the left. And we now jumped from 349 companies to three. Because they in the bank industry right here. We're in number one. And my price range right here, criteria number two, which is this blue part right here. Finally, I say within these two, see me all the companies with a time in this rank of three. And see me I have zero, which means I have zero companies that match these three criteria. If I choose a two, see what's to a two, let's see, four, oh, category here. Let's see, nothing for fours. Fives. Wow, nothing matches this. It's an idea of how hard it is to narrow down things. Let me remove the timeliness so I can show you what happens ultimately. Pulse of your screen after you go through the criteria. Okay. See, here's the output of the results from these, from one, two pieces of criteria that we asked for in the screen. I print this criteria off. Or you can also look at, so you can download this if you have this uh, um, subscription that allows you for download. Or you can look, look at the different tabs here, such as ratings and ranks, to change the information that you're in that. And I can scroll over left to right to see more or less, such as estimates and projections. Uh, if we cover any of those, profitabilities, so forth. Some data in your look at some information. So that's the screener. Um, the screener is probably one of the most used tools besides just simply going up to the white box and searching for a company. Um, and that will give you a good idea of uh, how they can get through the screener. The other thing um, I'll point out is every subscription comes with model portfolios. There's four models that your patrons can use to help them with their investment portfolios. Uh, so if they want to pick their own companies, we provide them with models to follow. And if I click on the model portfolio, as a quick introduction, you'll see there's four portfolios named one, two, three, and four. By clicking on any of those portfolios, it shows your patrons different models of what they can simulate or just take ideas from. In this model, for example, tells you right here, it's primarily suitable for those in, uh, more aggressive investors. And then we give you the name of the companies that we like, um, give you information on those companies. But most importantly, for those people who are a little more familiar with Value Line, each portfolio will tell your patrons exactly what you need to do to qualify to be in that portfolio. So it's kind of the transparency part that allows your patrons to see what our analysts are looking for to build this specific portfolio. This is a nice segue into um, with the selection and opinion. Also, every subscription comes with the selection and opinion, which if I go back to dashboard, see under the quick links box right here is the selection and opinion. This dated every Monday, and by clicking on that, I will upload the PDF version. And not only will we talk about the overview of the economy and the smart stock market, but it'll down, you'll see we'll get into the model portfolio updates.
And the four portfolios that I just pointed out to you, each week we'll tell your patrons what we've done to either add to a portfolio or change it. And as you scroll through, you'll see here's all the updates, and then we get into those actual portfolios again and show you the positions for each one. I put this out because this has heavily used not only by retail investors or your or your patrons, but also our professional customers. Your your visitor Merrill Lynch. Um, he looks at the same things that your patrons have access to. So it's a very powerful tool for those patrons, uh, faculty, staff, what have you, that are you know pro um, investors on their own and use their own methodologies or own opinions of value line rather than using a professional advisor. Uh, so they do have access to some of the same things that professional customers look at. On that note, uh, I'm going to close this report down. Um, just quickly uh, end on one last note here, and that's the investment education. This is a great online resource where you can direct uh, your users to go to get self help. Click on investment education, which I do, and then on the top right hand corner, tools and guides in the glossary are two heavily utilized features. If I can glossary, it'll bring you to just that a glossary of uh, very commonly used financial terms that you'll not only find in our reports, but you'll also find in our databases or in some of those screens that had lists on them. And by going to any of these and clicking on it, it, it just bring up the definition of uh, the each one that you're looking for. So the three is one great place. The second is tools and guides. The tools and guides are PDFs and videos of how to do any of the things we talked about. Here's some PDFs. How to use the screener, for example, that we just covered is right here. Here's a video library of some videos that you could watch to go over some of the things we talked about. Um, how to read a value line report, for example, is right here. And if I click on that, you'll see here's a PDF that walks you step by step on how to read that one page. Because it could be overwhelming if I scroll down. You know, points out each part of a report and you had to get the most out of it. So the investment education is a great resource to use. Um, let me shut that down, and at this point, let me look over to the chat, and we have a couple of questions. Um, will this webinar be archived? Yes. Uh, we had two people ask that question. We, this webinar will be archived. It is recorded. It could be found on our website, uh, valuelinepro.com. If you go to About Us webinar series schedule, and now you can see here's our past webinars. And you can see these webinars and watch them at your convenience. Uh, the other question we have is, can you show us where the industry information is? Okay, great question. As I mentioned, uh, we do cover about 100 different industries. Uh, so there's a couple of places to find them. First, if you're looking at a specific company, let's go back to Apple that was up as an example. Apple, Every company you pull up, as I pointed out, uh, the digital version has multiple modules. If you scroll through the modules, you get to industry analysis, which is right here. So while you're loaded in that specific company, you bring up the industry that it's in. In this case, it's in our computer, computers and peripherals, and it was 87th industry out of 1 through 100, and it gives you the full industry report right here that you can look at. You can also take this and print this out and take with you. You can see a list of all the companies that make up this industry right here. Now, keep in mind, the value line industries are proprietary. So if you also happen to subscribe to Morningstar, um, your Morningstar industries for computers won't necessarily match those of value line. That's probably the best place to see an industry while you're looking at a specific company. Um, but if you also want to see in general, if you go back to dash, excuse me, go back to dashboard, you, have, you can look at our, if you have access to the uh, traditional site here, click investment survey, and then on the left-hand side, you'll see look up industry. And you'll find a list of all the industry reports there. So 
at this point, I don't see any other questions. Let me end off by showing you how to contact us if you decide to um, future. If we go back to the ValueLinePro.com page, if you look at on the top right-hand corner, it says questions or contact us. If you click on that, it will up the page where you can just fill out a brief form with name, some information, and ultimately what your question is. And then also notice we have a direct email address at valuelinepro.com and also a direct phone number for institutional group that you contact us by calling 800-531-1425. Our business hours are typically 8.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. So at this point, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to attend the webinar. I hope you got some use out of it. Uh, please don't hesitate to contact us if you do have any questions going forward. Uh, if you're a prospective customer, we offer free trials, so make sure you take advantage of a free trial period. If you're an existing customer and want to try any new subscriptions to add on, we also can offer you trials of anything new as well. So again, Jason Weisberg, our Executive Vice President of Sales with Value Line. Again, thank you for your time. And, uh, we look forward to uh, hearing from you in the future. Enjoy the day.